Meteors are those people that we need to unlock, that we need to reach. Hi, George, and welcome. Thank you so much for chatting with the New Food Hub today. Hi, Gemma. Happy to be here. So to kick things off, tell us a little bit about Cultimate Fat. Can you give us a a really simple explanation um, of the technology behind your fat? So what we do in Cultimate, we produce animal fat without animals. And uh, how we do it, we actually grow animal fat cells. We are taking samples of cells from pigs and cows, um, and then we grow colonies of stem cells, which we later differentiate into fat. And this fat is meant to be as a like an ingredient for plant-based meat products to enhance them with uh, flavor, taste, uh, texture, so with everything that uh, conventional meat uh, has. Amazing. And what are the unique advantages of of cultivated fats then compared to traditional plant-based or animal fats? Sure. So if we compare our fat with uh, the plant oils, then we have uh, this authenticity of uh, taste, uh, of animal meat taste. And it's actually, uh, it was, uh, I think, overlooked that the most valuable part of meat uh, taste-wise is fat. So particular fat makes meat so delicious, bringing uh, juiciness and uh, this unique marbling to meat products. And uh, this is what we can replicate with uh, cultivated fat. And uh, unfortunately, it's not possible um, by adding uh, plant oils and tropical oils like coconut oil. And if we compare it to um, like uh, animal fats that is produced in a conventional way, so with uh, livestock farming, um, I would say that our product has uh, has a tuned uh, composition. So we make our fat uh, with more unsaturated fatty acids inside. And it makes it also a healthy product compared to, for example, under skin fat, uh, subcutaneous fat that is usually found in meat. So we produce high quality fat, which is usually found in between muscles of premium meats like Wagyu or uh, A grade meats. Your goal is to act as a B2B partner in supplying your, your cultivated fats to alternative protein businesses. What types of products are you currently working with? And once regulations allow, what are you hoping to get into retail? Yeah. So we are currently working on uh, beef uh, fat and also um, uh, pork fat. And uh, we collaborate with the food industry and ingredient houses by uh, mixing our fat uh, with the plant proteins and creating hybrid products. Um, we have now in our pipeline uh, uh, over than, I think it's more than one dozen of um, potential clients and pilot partners. And those are global food companies. Uh, those are plant-based meat brands. Together, we go to a food science lab on their site or on our site and create those products uh, with uh, with fat inside. There's obviously still a lot to be achieved um, in the sector. How do you envisage the, the market for cultivated fats evolving over the next, say, five to 10 years? No, yeah. this is a great uh, question. And um, I think that we, we chose the right approach from the very beginning because we didn't want to create a commodity product. Uh, we didn't want to create uh, the fat, which is 100% identical to some animal fat, which is sold for one one box per, per kilo in the uh, commodity exchange, uh, because we wouldn't be able to reach this uh, price point with the current scale. Yeah. So 
for now, I believe that the right approach is to, to have these products, these ingredients are the functional ingredients that are bringing the uh, functionality of uh, flavor, uh, augmenter, flavor extender, uh, and also substituting part of coconut oil in the formula, maybe even methyl cellulose. But as I mentioned, uh, we are creating a very powerful product, very powerful ingredient uh, that is uh, improving taste. And this is for what our customers already paying to flavor houses and to ingredient houses, and they are paying a lot. And this is where we can compete with our solution, or we can compete with uh, with our uh, partners from ingredient uh, business. Yeah. And uh, I believe that this approach of having it uh, as an ingredient uh, and uh, uh, not a commodity. This is the right one. But of course, uh, once we reach a uh, scale that allows us to drop the cost dramatically, it will open us also other applications for fat because fat is everywhere. Fat is in cosmetics, fat is in pet food, uh, fat is in, even in our fuels, in biofuels. So those are the enormous markets of uh, commodity fats that can be also unlocked with a more sustainable way of production of this product but this is something beyond 10 years yeah now we're focusing a lot on food and uh, we are food experts in food uh, and we believe this is the right first application uh, like to actually feed people with a better meats amazing it's yeah it's such a big market with so much potential um and i guess com coming with that it, there comes barriers as well um and what, what challenges do you foresee in the adoption of cultivated fats in the mainstream food industry? And how is Cultivate planning or how are you uh, trying to overcome these challenges? No, sure. I would say that uh, uh, we have as a startup uh, a lot of those. Yeah? And uh, of course, we have some challenges on the market side. And we have the challenges on uh, the side of technology. Yeah? So in the market, of course, the, the main challenge would be the uh, regulatory barriers that we are having in here in Europe, which are still very high. The bar is very high now. And uh, no one company is bringing the dossier to uh, EFSA because everyone is uh, uh, looking forward to uh, change changing of of those yeah of those laws of those regulations food regulations uh this is the one thing uh the other thing is what we experienced uh last year and i think this year is that it's been extremely difficult to raise funds for uh any uh food tech startup and it includes cultivated meat slash fat and uh, uh, we just closed it. So we just closed 2.3 million in March. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are happy that it, I, I think it's also validating that we are the company having the right approach in technology, in business, uh, the right team, etc. Because now only like a top companies, I think, closing the, the round. And this is the other thing. So the sector is uh, underfunded. Uh, and on the technology side, uh, if we forget about, uh, if we imagine that we have like uh, uh, enough money, we don't have so much barriers from regulators, so we can go and taste our products uh, and give it people to try to get more feedback, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I would say here the uh, scale up is uh, challenge number one for every company, and every company has its own. Uh, unique approach how to uh, how to overcome it uh, but i would say that every every company working here is having the same challenge yeah and uh, it's and i think it's also connected to the way how the company has been funded before because um, many startups that raised hundreds of millions from venture investors from private investors they are they cannot collaborate much and let's say synergize their knowledge with other 
companies. Uh, and for us, uh, we are in the very beginning of this way. So we just closed our first price round and uh, we uh, we are talking a lot to, to other similes, um, um, same size uh, companies and startups. And uh, we believe in collaboration in, the tech, in this sector a lot because we need to accelerate things. Um, so those are, I think, challenges that uh, everyone has now. Well, it seems that there is so much still to come from the, the cultivated fat sector. Um, in just one sentence, in a few words, please, can you tell us why you find personally the the cultivated fat sector such an exciting space to be to be working in right now? And why should other people be excited by this industry? Maybe it's going to be two or three sentences. <laughs> so fine. Before Cultimate, I had a plant-based meat company, which was started in late 2018. And the company actually grew very well in 2019, 2020, 2021. It was acquired by an, an ingredient processor. Uh, it was also a company from the ProVeg portfolio. We've been in a ProVeg incubator in tw uh, 2019. And uh, back then, we, we've seen like a how important taste is and how it's very difficult to find the right flavoring solution, to find the right formula, to find this balance in in your product of uh, uh, maybe fattiness and uh, uh, maybe maybe of the flavor and like how to combine everything together. Uh, and I after I exited the, that business, I wanted to bring that solution to plant-based meat companies because I knew that business from inside very well. I knew how it's difficult. I knew how uh, coconut oil and you know, rapeseed oil, sunflower oil, how, how they are actually not, not let's say, the right choice for, for the product. Yeah? And... Uh, uh, when I, I was thinking about it and I approached my uh, future co-founders, we were uh, talking about different solutions. We were thinking about other technologies as well, about precision fermentation, about encapsulation, etc. But what we agreed on that we need the authentic product and only self-cultivated uh, approach is uh, the right one. That's why... Uh, we we really want to bring this solution and we know our customer very well, very well because we've been on that side. To, to close our chat today, I'd love for you just to share some personal guidance. So as a co-founder and CEO, what's what's one piece of advice you would give to, to other entrepreneurs in the alternative protein space? So what's most important for them to know? Yeah, I think that sector is changing a lot now and uh, the requirements for the company starting there they also are different compared to maybe a couple of years ago unfortunately it's not possible anymore to come with a slide deck and uh, uh, i don't know kitchen prototype uh, and uh, start the business funded by investors yeah and I would maybe recommend to focus more on MVP and to spend as long as possible uh, on like generating data, confirming your hypothesis about the product, about your consumers and your customers. And uh, only the strong cases, they, they win now. And uh, the capital is something for what you need to fight. Uh, and uh, here, I would also recommend to look uh, to look at other sources of capital. There are many uh, there are many programs that are run by NGOs and also by governmental funds and um, institutions that support new innovations, that support new endeavors of people to bring sustainable solutions for food and. Uh, I would maybe look at them first and try not to give away a lot of uh, equity from the very beginning 
but to use every other possible source of scholarships, of, I don't know, little grants, of uh, incubators, and so on, to uh, build your case. And then once it's, it's robust, go and raise your money fast and accelerate your development. That's really solid and very well-rounded advice. Thank you so much, George. And yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, if anyone would like to, to follow Cultimate's journey, they can head to your website and get in touch with you guys there and um, follow you guys on LinkedIn as well, I'm sure. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for, for taking the time to chat to us today. Yeah, thanks, Gemma, for having me here. And uh, we are always happy to uh, to help Provech and to talk to Provech people. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.